Hi class, today we're going to talk about the structure of DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and of course I think most of you know that and you probably also know that it is a double helix as you could see in this picture that's rotating and you probably already know that it's your genetic material and that it makes you who you are so all your internal and external characteristics it's because of DNA and you get your DNA because you inherit it from your parents so it it's also a characteristic of all living things so no matter if you're a prokaryotic cell or a eukaryotic organism you're made you, your cells contain DNA but if you're a eukaryotic organism, which we are and we're going to focus on, your DNA is located in the nucleus. But if you're prokaryotic and you don't have a nucleus, it just kind of hangs out in a region called the nucleoid region instead. But either way, all cells have it and all cells inherit it, either sexually or asexually, from the parent or parents in which created the offspring. So let's talk about each one of these. Um, before we talk about the structure of DNA, a couple things I want to mention is that DNA is very important because it does control your characteristics, and it does that in a process called protein synthesis, which is also known as a central dogma in biology. And the main thing is that DNA is the blueprint, and it's copied into this stuff called RNA, which is very similar. We'll talk about it later. And then the RNA is read and translated into something called a protein. And this is called protein synthesis. So DNA makes RNA, RNA makes protein, and protein make all your characteristics. And that's where we're heading in the next couple of chapters. So first thing, when we're talking about DNA, I want to focus on that the fact that DNA comes in three different forms inside of cell during the life of, this life of a cell. And we're going to work up to cell division, such as mitosis and meiosis, and you need to know these terms of how DNA looks. So the first one is chromatin form. DNA is usually in chromatin form. That just means it's all relaxed, it's uncoiled, and it's doing its normal work, which is making proteins, setting out instructions to make proteins. You can't see it if you look into a very powerful electron microscope, but you know it's there, it's a, it just looks like a solid nucleus. So this is a picture, you can see the nucleus in the purple, and you can see these red and blue squigglies. So DNA, it just, it's all in here, just kind of like this, all spread out, all 46 pieces, which is how many pieces humans have. The second form of DNA is called a single chromosome form. So we have chromosomes. Chromosomes are little condensed packets of DNA. During the time a cell will divide, the uncoiled DNA needs to pack itself up, just like you're moving to a new house. You pack all your stuff out up into nice little condensed boxes that are easier to move to your new home. So DNA gets packed up into these, into these little structures called chromosomes, and then they'll get split into each of the new cells during division. So you can only see these during division. So the, it's coiled up DNA. So this is how I usually draw a chromosome in class. I'll draw, kind of looks like a helicopter wing, kind of like this and then it has a center part called a centromere. Now what that really means is that, I mean, this part is all this coiled DNA. It's coiling, 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 kind of like a hurricane. But most books represent it looking like the propeller, like a blade of, of a helicopter, because it's easier to draw. Now the last form that DNA comes in is a chromosome form again, but it's in doubled form because it copied itself. And it has to copy itself because we're trying to copy cells in a process called division. So it makes sense, you copy your DNA, you're gonna get a doubled chromosome. And so this is a doubled chromosome in this picture. Here's the single chromosome. I will also draw it in class kind of like this, where I have, here's the single chromosome. There it is, and then I'll make a copy right next to it. And this is kind of how I draw my doubled chromosome. And it's held in the center. Those two sides are held to, in the center by something called a centromere. So this side and this side are identical copies of each other. And because they're identical copies of them, we call them sister chromatids. So it's one chromosome, really, in doubled form. And each separate side is called a sister chromosome. Eventually, the sisters will be separated and each go into a new cell. So those are the three different forms that DNA comes in. Here's chromatin all messy in this picture. And then it will start to coil up and coil up and coil up. And it does so by wrapping itself around these proteins called histones, kind of like thread will be wound around a spool. And it will do something called supercoiling. And you could see how all the DNA kind of coils and coils and coils and makes a chromosome. 
and then it'll copy itself and it'll be in doubled chromosome form. And each one of these, each half of the doubled chromosome is called a sister chromatid. And they are identical copies of each other that will be pulled apart in the middle when the cell divides. These are electron micrograph pictures of chromosomes. And so you could see here's the single chromosome. It will double itself because it copies. And then the sister chromatids will be separated one into each of these two new cells. This is it under a microscope. Chromosome is a whole thing, but each side is a sister chromatid and they will be separated during cell division. And we have 46 of these chromosomes, and every chromosome is different in size. So this is showing the X and Y chromosome that causes sex um, determination. And you can see that the Y is very small, and the X one is larger in size, and that each one of these in this picture down here show different sizes of chromosomes. So let's talk about the structure of the DNA now. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So it's one of the four major macromolecules. It's one of the nucleic acids. You may remember carbs, lipids, and proteins being the other three that we discussed early in the year. And each one of these macromolecules is made of single units called monomers that can be put to together into long chains called polymers. And so we could go over carbs have monosaccharides, which make polysaccharides. Proteins have amino acids that make polypeptides. There's fatty acids that make bigger lipids called triglycerides. But in the nucleic acids, we have an important part called a nucleotide, which is a monomer that makes our DNA or our RNA. But we are going to focus on DNA. So let's look at the structure of these things called nucleotides. So the nucleotide, the monomer, has three parts. And so this entire picture down here, this is one nucleotide. And so these are the units that are going to repeat themselves to make DNA. The three parts of the nucleotide include the sugar, and because it's deoxyribonucleic acid, the sugar is called deoxyribose. So this is a deoxyribose sugar, and because it's a five-sided sugar, it's because it has five carbons, we call it a pentose sugar as well. Then we have over here something called a phosphate group. And then it's a phosphorus with four oxygens surrounding it. And then finally, there's one of four different nitrogenous bases. A nitrogenous base just means it contains nitrogen. And the four versions that could go there are either adenine, thymine, cytosine, or guanine. And we usually use the first letter for an abbreviation. This is a more detailed version of it with all the different atoms. So you can see how complex they really are. But I like the previous picture better just to show the general structure of a nucleotide. So here, there's the deoxyribo sugar, here's the phosphate group, and here's one of the four nitrogenous bases. So let's talk about the fact that DNA is a double helix, which means it's like a ladder that's twisted. And the sides of the ladder, which are shown in blue and yellow, are going down the sides here that are twisting. We call these things the backbone of DNA. And the things in the center, which are the rungs, we call them the base pairs. So if we unwind DNA and make it a straight ladder structure, here's one nucleotide. And remember, monomers, which is a nucleotide, will be linked together to make chains of them. And so here's a second nucleotide that's hooked up to a third nucleotide and to the fourth. And then on the other side, here's the, oops, wrong color. Here's the nucleotide, second one, third one, etc. So they're chains of nucleotides, but there's two strands of them, one on one side and one on the other side. So there are two strands of nucleotides. Now the next thing I want to point out with this is that the backbone, which in the backbone is right here. It's the blue and yellow part, just like it's blue and yellow here. This backbone is only made of phosphates and sugars. So sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, and they repeat every other. And so we call the backbone a sugar phosphate backbone. So it has the deoxyribo sugar and the phosphate groups. And same thing on the other side. Now the center part, these would be the rungs of the ladder. And the rungs of the ladder are base pairs. And that just means it's a pair of two bases. So this, in this case, there's a G and a C that are paired up, and a T and an A that are paired up, etc. And so we call the rungs base pairs. Now, the base pairs are held together in the middle by a, a very weak bond called a hydrogen bond. And that's important because we need to replicate DNA. So we need something strong but kind of still weak in the middle to copy the DNA. 
All right, so next thing I want to focus are on the base pairs. How do we know what base pair goes with what? So how do we know what letters go with what? Well, we have four, as we talked about. We have four bases. We have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. But what we found out is that A's always match with T's and C's always go with G's, no matter what organism's DNA you look at. And we say that the fact that these go together, we say that it's called complementary. So in this case, just so you know the difference, complementary, it's spelled with an E, not an I. When it's spelled with an I, you're saying something nice about somebody. You're complimenting them. But when it's spelled with an E, complementary, that means that two things go together nicely, like peanut butter and jelly, spaghetti and meatballs, adenine and thymine, cytosine and guanine. So they, those are complementary, and because there's two of them, we call it a base pair, complementary base pairs. The next thing I want to focus on is that they're held together. The base pairs are held together by something called hydrogen bonds. Now, it's not just one, they're actually made out of two or three. So you can see in A and T here, there's one, two hydrogen bonds. So sometimes it's, I, I like to put two lines, so you remember that. And one, two, three hydrogen bonds are used to hold C and G. So you can see it like this sometimes. So it's actually a little bit harder to break the C's and the G's from each other and then it is the A's and the T's because there's more bonds. The last thing I want you to know about the bases is that some of them have a double ring structure and some of them have a single ring structure. This is important because it allows them, to, you always have to have a double with a single, but their structure is different which means that A's and T's like to get together and C's and G's like to bond together. The ones that are double ring structures, which are guanine and adenine, are called purines. The ones that are single ring structures are called pyrimidines, which are thymine and cytosine. And students sometimes have trouble remembering this, but I tell them that pyrimidine has a Y, thymine has a Y, and cytosine has a Y, so you can remember it that way. That's how I do it. And um, the purines, A's and G's, they don't have it. So a purine always hydrogen bonds to a pyrimidine. Now some people are like, how come then T's and G's don't get together? And there's a, there's a chemically they don't like to, but let's say if it were to happen, those are things called mutations. All right, so that is the structure of the base pairs. The last thing I wanna talk about with DNA structure is the fact that DNA is not a mirror image on each side. It's actually a upside down mirror image on each side. And we call this anti-parallel. It's like, instead of two things being parallel like this, one's actually turned upside down like this. And that's why it's called anti-parallel. And because of this, it's like a two-way street. And we label this structure by giving it names called five prime and three prime. So one side of the DNA is called the five prime end, and the other side is called the three prime end. And so this strand runs, from five to three, but this one runs up from five to three, anti-parallel. What these five and pri fives and threes mean, it's a molecular chemical thing, but just to give you a basic overview of it, when you take the structure of a deoxyribose, which is right here, the, um, there's a total of five carbons in the sugar, and each carbon is given a number, and they start the numbering system at, at the oxygen clockwise. So you find the oxygen, which is right here, and then you start numbering each carbon going in a clockwise fashion. And so this is one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, five prime carbon. That the phosphate is coming off the fifth carbon. So here's the fifth carbon, the phosphate's coming off of it. That's why it's called the five prime end. But because on this side, there's nothing coming off that three prime end except for hydroxyl, which is part of the sugar, it's called the three prime end. And so it's a chemical naming system and why it's called the five prime and three prime end. But it just means anti-parallel that DNA, one side is upside down compared to the other. And that's pretty much the structure of DNA. Hopefully that was helpful. Come to class with questions. Bye.